Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, I just got back from doing open mic here in Tempe, Arizona, in ASU town, college town, Arizona. I went and just played two songs on my guitar and sang. One of them was an original, and one of them was a cover of Four Winds by Bright Eyes. So it was really fun. It was really exciting. There were only a couple people there by the time that I got to play, but I was really proud of my work, really proud of my practice. It had been probably 10 years at least since I had played anything live for anyone. So it was really fun, it was really exciting. What I'm gonna talk about today is something that is kind of in the realm of things that I've talked about, but isn't necessarily something that I've focused on. So Lewis Capaldi is a Scottish musician. I'm about 31, he's about 27. So he's about my age, a couple years younger than me. He found fame very young. He has had a lot of songs on the radio, you know, and he was just from some town in Scotland, you know, just some kid, you know, kind of looks like me, not the skinniest kid, not really like the, I don't want to say the, the best looking dude, you know, but, you know, he's a human, he's a person, and I remember making a video a couple weeks ago that I actually deleted a couple of days after I made it because I was just kind of talking crap about Louis Capaldi and how his voice is kind of whiny and I still believe that his voice is kind of whiny not my favorite music in the world but you know um, Glastonbury is a huge festival in Scotland that takes place once a year it just took place a couple days ago and Louis Capaldi has played there a couple times ago. He's from Glastonbury, Scotland. So pretty much his hometown. So he's headlined at Glastonbury, you know, a couple times since 2019. At this performance in June of 2023, it was very apparent that Louis Capaldi was suffering from some really severe mental illnesses. A little less than a year ago, he came out and said that he had been diagnosed with Tourette syndrome. He has tics, you know, that are vocal. He has tics that are physical. He kind of like does, you know, things with his neck and stuff. Personally, I've been wondering lately if I'm on the spectrum, if I have OCD or if I have, you know, something like Tourette's. I don't think that I am autistic, you know, socially I'm okay, you know, I have social anxiety, but, you know, with women, with, you know, guy friends, you know, I'm, I'm okay with that, like, there's nothing that is different there. But there are some things that I do, you know, sometimes, like, when I'm adjusting myself, like, if I'm adjusting my glasses or something, I'll, like, do this thing where like, you know, I'll adjust it and then I'll have to cover my whole face. And it's really strange, you know, I've never gotten any like personal help for it, but you know, it's something that really makes me wonder because, you know, um, I unfortunately abused a lot of amphetamines. I abused a lot of heroin and um, I'm not proud of that, but that's part of my history. That's what I did. And I think that some of that meth that I did, you know, really messed with my brain and some of my tics and possibly turned what was obsessive compulsive behavior into an obsessive compulsive disorder. Which, you know, like if I'm doing things, like if I'm just looking at something or if I'm like doing that, like I'll like have to cover my whole body, cover all the light. It's really weird. Um, it's just kind of some weird little tick that I do. And I noticed that it got worse when I started, you know, sticking meth into my arm. Go figure. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm a little crazy. But one of the things that I'm not going to do on this channel is I'm not going to stray away from the things that I've done. I'm not going to 
have the shame that I've had. I'm not going to have the guilt that I've had because that is one of the most destructive parts of addiction. And it's one of the most unnecessary parts of addiction. You know, if I want my mom to forgive me, if I want my sisters and my brother to forgive me and start treating me like the person that I am, then I have to stop doing that weird stuff that I was doing before, you know? Um, but when you got to do stuff, like every time you look around, you got to go like this, you know, it looks a little bit weird, but I don't think most people notice it. I probably notice it more than, uh, most people, you know, as an artist, you know, we're all our worst critics. But anyways, I really wanted to talk about Louis Capaldi because he came out about a year ago and said that he had Tourette's syndrome and he has tics. And there's been a couple times you know, in the last, like, six to nine months where he has been playing sets at huge festivals. Glastonbury the other day was one of them. And he lost his voice, and he started having tics. You know, like, he started kind of twitching, and he lost his voice, and the crowd, you know, came and helped him and sang the lyrics. And it was beautiful, you know, I mean... I would hope in a world-famous singer's hometown that they'd help him sing the lyrics to, uh, like, his biggest song. But regardless, it was really cool. It was really cool to see. And Louis Capaldi is not my favorite musician in the world. The song's not really that hard to sing. I mean, it sounds cool, but, you know. I was getting kind of used to be so in love. So it's like, it's not that hard to sing, really. But he's cool, and, and it's cool, and it's really sad to see him going through all this Tourette stuff, having to see someone, you know, and he talks about it in interviews, how the anxiety, the performing anxiety, getting famous at a really young age, and all of that really propelled his Tourette's and his tics, and all the stuff that you know, prevents him from being the performer and the artist that he wants to be and deserves to be. It's gotten worse, you know. I don't want to say worse. It's gotten more severe over the last couple months. Uh, Louis Capaldi released a documentary on Netflix in April of this year, April 2023. And uh, that's, you know, that's a really good start into seeing what he's gone through. But, you know, it's sad to see, you know, I'm 31, he's like 27. It's sad to see an artist in his prime so torn down by these ailments. I mean, you can see in, like, most of the interviews he's done in the last couple months, he's just, like, you know, he's trying to make light of it. He's trying to kind of be funny and be like, you know, I'm just pretty much bragging about all the stuff that's wrong with me now, but... He's serious, and it's really affecting him, and I think it's really sad, you know. I hope that he is able to bounce back from this, or at least treat it. It makes me so grateful as a musician with mental disorders that there's someone who is willing to be open and come out and be like, dude, I have Tourette's. Like, sometimes my you know, like, sometimes I can't control what I do. Sometimes I lose my voice while I'm singing in front of thousands of people. Imagine that. Like, that would, that would be terrible. But he's willing to make this and discuss it. And I think that that's the most important thing, you know. So, Lewis, I uploaded a video about you a couple days ago, kind of talking crap about you. I deleted it because I didn't think it was fair. So, I love you, dude. Keep on doing what you're doing, regardless of what holds you back. It makes me so relieved to see people that are willing to be open about their stuff. You know, I was born with a severe heart defect. I've had two open heart surgeries. You know, I have a liver disease. I have hepatitis C. So, you know, I relate. And it makes me grateful that there are people that are willing to be open, you know. 
especially artists that have stuff on the line that they could lose, like sponsorships or whatever, you know, record deals. So, Lewis, I really hope that uh, you start to do better. If not, we're here for you, dude. I know that I've never met you, probably never will, but we're here with you, man. And, you know, we all suffer at the end of the day from the human condition, no matter what. So, after that man, a little something. Lewis, I hope that you're doing all right, man. And I am grateful to be in decent health, to be here, and to just still be kicking. I'm really grateful for that. So, if you made it this far, I'd really appreciate it. If you take just one second, just click the like button and subscribe. I probably have videos uh, that you might like. Anything from film, mental health, music, bands, covers, all skits, dumb stuff with my dog, all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, if you like any kind of stuff like that, I probably have some content that you can join. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again soon.